I found a picture of my mother in a 300-year-old book. I'm now convinced I'm going to be dead tomorrow. This is a 300-year-old book, the librarian told me. Please don't damage it in any way. Otherwise, you will be in all sorts of trouble. I will be back in half an hour to collect it. I hope you find what you need. I looked down at the book and saw that written in green ink were the words, Creatures and Beasts. The title was in the center of the cover and underneath the words was a small image of what looked like a red dragon. I admired the artwork for a moment before carefully opening the book. I carefully lifted each page and placed it down gently, not wanting to damage it and getting Mrs. Poole in trouble. I looked through the many pages of the book, each one with a different painting of a creature, which underneath had a paragraph explaining what the creature was and where it could be found. I looked through the pages trying to find the three that I wanted to write about. I read about the Bone Fairy from Scotland, the Tree Walker from Canada, and the Sky Dweller from India, all of which I found interesting but I couldn't find enough about them to write about them in my report. I kept on turning the pages of the book and when I turned the page and read the words, The Alluring Harpy, and that was when I saw it. The Alluring Harpy was a winged woman that had long claws at the end of her arms. She was wearing a light purple dress with her wings sprouting out the back of it. She had a seductive smile and eyes that looked inviting. It looked like the sort of creature you would find in a book about ancient mythical creatures, and normally I wouldn't think anything of it, but there was something about this picture. The face of the harpy was the face of my mother. I don't mean they looked similar or bared a resemblance, I mean they looked exactly identical. I was looking at a painting of my mother. I sat staring at the photo for maybe a minute or two, but my stare was broken when Mrs. Poole returned and said to me, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to return that book now. The curator is here and I can get into a lot of trouble for allowing you to read this book. She then went to grab the book off of the table and return it. I hadn't read about the alluring harpy yet and so I quickly begged Mrs. Poole to give me one more minute to read about it but she said that it wasn't possible. She said that she could take a photo of the page for me though and I could collect it the next day. I told her that that would be great and that I would be back the next day to look at the photograph. She then took the book off of the table and walked it over to the locked door. On the way out I looked back at the library and thought about what I had seen. I knew that it was probably just a coincidence that my mother looked exactly like the picture of the harpy, but at the same time I thought that it was too similar to not have any connection to my mother. As I was walking home I was plagued by thoughts of my mother and the harpy. I couldn't get it out of my mind. I didn't really want to see my mother when I got home because she would know something was wrong and she would find a way to get me to talk about what I had seen. So I was disappointed when I arrived home and saw my mom's beaten up Toyota sitting in the driveway. I slowly walked inside trying to avoid my mom and go to my room that I share with four of my brothers. I walked in through the front door and standing right there in the hallway was my mother. Good afternoon, she said to me. How was your day today? I looked down at my feet and answered that it was a good day. I then tried to excuse myself to go to my room but she stopped me. She knew something was wrong. She asked if everything was okay. I told her that it was. I don't know why I was so nervous around my mother now. Just because I had seen the picture didn't mean it was her. That was just crazy. My mom would have no idea about any harpy, and I knew that I was just being silly, but still, I couldn't help but feel nervous around her. Are you sure that everything is okay today? You seem different, like you were nervous about something. My mom said to me again, trying to get an answer out of me. I stood there for a moment before I began to speak. Yeah, everything is okay today, mom, I replied. I just have a history report due soon, and I am not too sure what to write about. Oh, I can give you a hand with it if you want, she offered. I then decided to explain about the assignment and tell her about a few of the mythical creatures that I had seen in the book. She told me she didn't know much about that sort of thing but would try and help me anyway. I told her about the Bone Fairy and about the Sky Dweller. I didn't really need help with these but I was building myself up to mentioning the Alluring Harpy. Eventually I did manage to mention it. As soon as the words the Alluring Harpy exited my mouth I saw the look in my mother's eyes. The look of fear. The look someone gets when they have been caught out. Never heard of this creature? Mom finally managed to say. Sounds interesting though. I told her that I didn't know much about it, but I wanted to know more. She then told me that if I didn't know much about it, then maybe I shouldn't write about that creature. She then flashed me a sweet smile and her eyes almost sparkled at me. I suddenly felt a lot more comforted. I realized how stupid I was being and that there was no way that there was any connection between the harpy and my mom. Mom then lightly touched me on the shoulder, and I felt a warmth run through my arm and all of my worries of before were now vanished. My mother then excused herself and told me that she had to get dinner ready. She left and went to the kitchen to begin cooking. As she walked off, I could have sworn I saw a slight bulge under the back of her top, right where a wing could have been, but I quickly dismissed this as my eyes playing tricks on me. The next day I was riding my back home from school when I suddenly remembered the photo that Mrs. Poole was going to take of the book. I had almost completely forgotten about it, like it had been wiped from my memory, but I remembered at the last minute and decided to head to the library to get a look at this photo. I made it to the library and was greeted by Mrs. Poole, who when she saw me reached into her pocket and pulled out a small photograph. She handed it to me, and I saw that it was the picture of the page I wanted to read. It was hard to read because the photo was so small, but I managed to read what it read. It read as follows, The alluring harpy is a dangerous beast. It uses the power of love and desire to get what it wants, and what it wants is to spread its evil across the world. The harpy will disguise itself to look like a human woman, but it actually has sharp claws, sharp fangs, and wings. The harpy will use its powers of seduction to seduce men, where it will then try and reproduce with these men. Its powers of seduction often come from their beautiful smiles, their enchanting eyes, and their soft touch. 
Often harpies will have multiple children to multiple men. Once the harpy has mated with a man, it will perform a small ritual that involves lighting candles and then eating the male. The harpy will then be pregnant and will soon give birth to its children. Harpies will often have around 15 to 20 children in a 30 year period before waiting 100 years, then start the mating period once again. Its offspring will appear human, but when they reach a certain age, they will begin to develop their own abilities, abilities of seduction and manipulation. They then only have one purpose. They must manipulate as many people as they can. They try and manipulate people to do their bidding, almost like slaves. Once the harpy's offspring are old enough, they will begin to mate as well, and they will try and pass along their bloodline to as many people as possible. The goal of the alluring harpy is to slowly take over the human population with their own bloodlines. I finished reading and I couldn't believe what I had read. The multiple children with multiple men really struck me. I also was concerned about the harpy's smile and touch, as this was something that I had experienced the night before with my own mother. Her touch had seemed to make all my worries disappear. Maybe these are all coincidences, and I am just worrying about nothing. Or maybe I am one of the offspring, and I am yet to fulfill my purpose. I really didn't know what to think, so I just stood there in the middle of the library, clutching the photograph of the textbook. Is everything all right, dear? Mrs. Poole said to me, looking concerned because I hadn't moved for a little while. I took a second to process what she said, but once I had, I answered that everything was all right, but I needed to get going now. I handed back the photo to Mrs. Poole and thanked her for getting it for me. Then I headed out of the library door and began to make my way home. So many questions swirled in my head on the walk home. Questions I wasn't even sure I wanted the answers to. My own thoughts must have distracted me though because before I even had time to process all of them, I was standing in my driveway looking up towards my house, the house that my mother was inside of. Everything appeared to be normal, apart from one thing. A small light was illuminating from within my mother's bedroom. The light was shining through the thin curtain that blocked the view into her bedroom. I could see that this light was flickering and so I knew exactly what it was, a candle. I felt a small rush of fear begin to overcome me. My mother had never burnt candles since I had been alive and after what I had just read I was worried as to why she was now. I slowly walked down my driveway into the front door, trying to stay as quiet as possible. I knew that it was all ridiculous. My mother couldn't be some creature that seduces and eats men. It sounded so stupid when I thought of it like that. But there was something, some feeling deep inside that made me believe that it was true. Once I reached the front door I pulled out my key ring, found the front door key and slowly inserted it into the lock. I slowly turned the key and pushed the door open. I couldn't see or hear any of my other siblings. The house was eerily quiet, apart from a small crunching sound coming from the room down the hallway. My mom's bedroom. I slowly began to walk down the hallway, taking one small step at a time. As I walked closer and closer to my mother's bedroom door, the crunching sound grew louder and louder. Once the harpy has mated with a man, it will perform a small ritual that involves lighting candles and then eating the male. This line that I read in the old book kept on repeating itself in my mind. What if that is what is happening right now? I was now standing close to the bedroom door. Sweat was now running down my face and my heart was racing. I could still hear it, the crunching sound from beyond the door. It sounded like something was scraping and crunching down on bone. I really didn't want to think about what the sound really was. I placed my hand on the door handle. Was I really about to enter this room? I tried to slow down my breathing and relax and tried to think of a rational explanation for all of this, but I couldn't think of one. I slowly began to turn the door handle. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was the loud snapping sound that I heard as soon as I began to turn the handle. But something made me stop and let go of the door handle. I left the door closed and began to walk away. I think I just didn't want to know what was happening on the other side of that door. I went to my room and put in some headphones to try and block out any noise that may be coming from my mom's bedroom. I didn't really sleep that night, only a few minutes here and there. The thoughts of my mother and the harpy occupied my mind. Eventually, though, it was morning and I must have dozed off because I was awoken by my mom entering the room. Good morning, darling, she said to me, her voice bright and cheerful. I have some excellent news for you. You are going to be a big brother. I am pregnant. 